is a very interesting case of a 56-year-old male who presented with a vague history of a left buttock arterial venous malformation on the CT scan. You can see previously thrombosed uh, aneurysm uh, and a massive buttock hematoma. You can see the uh, clinical insight picture of this huge hematoma uh, in his left buttock. Uh, this is the point that he could not lie prone, hence the reason the CAT scan is actually upside down. Uh, we took him to the operating room um, and did an on-table cone beam CT and fused his images. Now, some of these um, embolization pictures are speeded up, really, for content purposes. Uh, this is not the speed at which to deploy coils or you, or you put onyx. The green-red marks are fused images, uh, which show us the origin of the internal iliac artery, and then the origins of the branches, which we chose off the fused image, the fused CAT scan image, uh, to allow us to actually target them. Now, this patient had previously had a history of embolization. Uh, clearly, this um, had, had failed, um, and he now had uh, reperfusion of this and, and bleeding into his buttock. And so we had selected these branches, superior gluteal branches, branches, uh, which were off the, the, the preoperative CAT scan. We then, uh, really fairly straightforward, once you've spent the time doing this, to uh, simply follow the dots uh, and cannulate these branches. And so the first branch, we had come, we embolized them fairly extensively, but you can see all these little side branches still perfuse. Now it's difficult to see, but there's a microcatheter in there. And so we backed this up really with uh, placing onyx. And the advantage of onyx is it will give you the solid plug. It will also follow down into the second and third degree branches to try and ensure uh, that that there is adequate um, uh, decompression of this because the plan was it was so big and the patient had uh, symptoms in their foot, probably from sciatic nerve compression, that our plan was to actually turn this patient over, uh, leave it a day or two, restudy it, make sure we had uh, devascularized this, turn the patient oh, at least up on their side. Uh, at that point in time, you have no vascular access for vascular control. So we wanted to make sure uh, that there was adequate um, uh, devascularization of this. So now we're actually injecting onyx again. Uh, this is speeded up, really, so we can actually show you the entire case. The whole case probably took about an hour and a half to do all this embolization. Now we've backed up the microcatheter a little bit. And we are uh, continuing to take out um, the superior gluteal branches here. <clears throat> Concerns obviously are uh, non-target organ embolization. Could we make this, this sciatic nerve ischemic? This, these things happen very rarely. These are so vascular, it's pretty hard to actually render something completely devascularized. Now you can see the advantage of the onyx. It gets all these little secondary uh, branches which are coming off the side really of the main trunk. And I believe here we actually finally uh, put in a coil really to back up uh, close to the origin. So a little bit more onyx put in there. <coughs> and again, what you're always watching for is it's always either the last coil or the last uh, onyx injection that gets you in trouble because it's coming close to the origin of these target vessels. And so there you are, we've uh, got this uh, fairly well occluded and we chose to put in one more coil uh, really to uh, complete that plug. So we've got the coils distally, onyx, which takes out these little side branches, one more coil. Now we're actually going to reposition this uh, because some of the other branches that were identified, um, we wanted, again, it was because of the concern and turning this patient on the side and potentially not being able to get vascular control, we really spent a lot of time trying to take out as many of these little branches as we can. That's speeded up where there's more onyx. Again, there's just the advantage how the onyx it will creep into and take out of these side branches. Now, the other feeding vessels were actually coming off the profunda and coming backwards up into the buttock. Uh, there had been previous embolization um, of uh, branches of the profunda. Again, clearly did not completely devascularize this. The underlying diagnosis is always hard to be absolutely sure. I presume this is uh, some sort of variant of anterior venous malformation. Um, it's unusual to get concurrent big pelvic aneurysm, um, but it certainly can happen. And there's no history of trauma uh, that we could elucidate that would suggest, for example, the penetrating injury in the buttock, that this just could be a long-standing AV fistula, because once AV fistulas have been long-standing for a long period of time, it can be extraordinarily difficult to actually distinguish it from an anterior venous malformation. It's largely based upon history.
Okay, so now we've taken out those uh, those other branches and everything's going to be repositioned. The catheter has now been brought down into the profunda. Um, you can see the profunda itself is aneurysm. Now that really does look like malformation. These tortuous, abnormal looking vessels down there and this uh, huge branch probably coming off the, um, the one of the circumflex vessels. And same idea, basically, in this case, I think it's uh, predominantly onyx that we put in there. The, ca the main catheter we pulled by this because we left that microcatheter. And you see that little uh, radiopaque marker, basically, further down that represents the microcatheter. Microcatheters are difficult to see. <coughs> and if you move them fast you, uh, across the floral field, uh, it's often very, you often miss them and then you've got to go find the end of it. So when you're actually, uh, you, can, you can measure what the length of your diagnostic is. So if it's 190 centimeters, for example, then you put the microcatheter in for about 90 centimeters. Then, you, then you've got to go slowly and start looking it up. And again, here you can see the advantage is we're getting all of those little branches off the, uh, uh, off, uh, the profunda there. As it's come back into that aneurysmal component, uh, we switch over to coils because coils really do uh, a bigger, a better job when you're dealing with a big blood vessel. <coughs> so we're just continuing to inject onyx. And as we come back into the uh, bigger component of the profunda we're going to take out the, the uh, microcatheter um, and you hope the diagnostics not got plugged and then we're going to replace it uh, with coils these are uh, interlock coils from boston scientific um, generally they work pretty well there's uh, sometimes the detachment system doesn't come off quite as predictably as you would like it to and so you got to be a little careful make sure that when the coil is deployed that it's actually detached from its uh, delivery system otherwise you can pull the coil back and, and in fact pull the whole coil pack back one of the important things is just making sure there's adequate density of packing so you start off with bigger coils these are probably 16s and then you work to smaller coils you fill the inside of the 16 coils with eights and tens for example and here you can see uh, we're in the process of losing the coil and that's what you don't want to do you want you want to and they, these are reconstrainable as long as it's not being delivered they're reconstrainable you can actually remove them and that's what we actually did in this particular case and decided that we were done so there's a second stage to this case where we show the uh, buttock hematoma evacuation thank you <laughs>